Hi there, my name is Sam and I am going to be walking you through how to create a 1.4 megawatt system in our new system design platform. So to get started, we'll go to our projects tab and I'll click on create new project. We will call this multi megawatt design. This is a project for our customer named Joe Solar and it is a commercial project. All right, I will go right ahead and input this customer's energy consumption information. So there are three different ways in which you can do that in Aurora. You can do a quick estimate. You can input each month's bills if you have a full year of utility bills. Or you can upload a CSV file or an XML file if you're using green button data. So just to show you how that works, I'll click on Upload Data. And I will select the utility provider and the utility rate. And I'll select Upload and click Submit. So in here, you can see that Aurora processes that data file and gives you your monthly bill amount, energy consumption, and any sort of demand charges that you have. You can also see what the load profile looks like down at the bottom, broken out by different seasons of the year. Let's go ahead and explore the other option. Click on Estimate over here. I'll select a building type. I can select a utility provider and our utility rate. And now I can input any sort of value for the energy amount of the bill in a given month. And we can see what this would look like based off of our simulated load profile. Once again, broken out by season. All right, now let's go into the design section and I will call this prelim design and hit create. So one of the first things you'll notice is that Aurora is loading a whole bunch of data sets, including LiDAR and other information for this location. To get started, I like to look at the map split view, and I can use that just to get a rough sense of what the site looks like. So let's close that now. If I'm using Google or Bing imagery, I just click on the sides to expand my field of view. However, you also have access to HD imagery in many cases, and in here, I can once again expand my field of view. And now we have a nice crisp near map image. All right, to get started, let's click on Smart Roof, and I'll click on Flat. And I am going to click on the corners of this building. All right, so that's one building over there. And then I will draw another building. And one of the neat new tools that we've developed is the ability to auto pan. Okay, that's great. And then I will add in this building over here. All right, fantastic. Next, I want to detect all of the obstructions on this roof. So to get started, I'll click on Add Obstruction and select Rectangle. Select this obstruction over here. I can edit my settings, like what the height of the obstruction should be. Now just click Detect Similar Obstructions. And Aurora will run through and detect all the obstructions that are of the same type as that one that I just highlighted. And you can do that for all the obstruction types on this site. So for example, I am going to do it for this one over here. And I am going to do it for all of these circular obstructions. Another major benefit of this platform is LiDAR. LiDAR is essentially when some sort of aerial vehicle has flown over this location. It's pinged the site. It's measured how long it takes for that laser beam to be returned back to the receptor on the plane and generates a point cloud, Aurora takes this point cloud and converts it into a mesh. From there, I will select Fit Buildings to LiDAR, and now Aurora will raise the height of all of these buildings to match up with the LiDAR data that you see in front of you. You can see that over here on the left side, it looks like, based off of the LiDAR data, there's some sort of parapet wall over here. So why don't I go ahead and draw that in? All right, so we have shown you a number of really powerful tools on site design. I'm going to add two more. One is the ability to add trees. I can just click on Draw Tree and do that very quickly and easily. And another is the ability to run irradiance maps. So if I just click over here on irradiance, 
That is going to simulate the sun's path for every daylight hour of the year, and it's going to take into account things such as trees, pipe vents, obstructions in the roof, the shading of one building on another, and over in the bottom right you can see that we have some data, and as I move to different locations you can see how it changes for different months of the year. All right, great. So what I'm going to do is turn off the radiance and let's go back to designing our system. I will click on system now and I want to start off by inserting panels and I will select fill zone. I can draw out the fill zone or if I double click on the roof it will select the entire roof face. Over here on the right there are a number of input options. I can choose which kind of modules, which orientation, which fill mode, single tilt or dual tilt and specify the percentage or I can select a few presets. So for example, I am going to choose the Helix Single Tilt preset, and I'll go ahead and click on Place Modules. So here you can see 3,500 modules were placed. That's about one and a half megawatts. You know, zooming in, we can see that it has stuck, stayed true to the actual layout of this particular design that I picked. Next, I'll click on Electrical. And after clicking on Electrical, I will select a few inverters. And Aurora's new auto stringing algorithm will essentially run through the entire design and come up with the best combination for this particular site, given the input output constraints of this inverter, making sure it's NEC code compliant, and making sure that we string as many modules as you have on there. So if I switch back to 2D, you can see more details about the stringing configuration and things like that. All right, so that's one way of adding a fill zone. Another way of adding a fill zone is if I click on insert panels once again, and this time I will manually draw out a fill zone. And once I have that, I may choose in this case, I'm going to choose a dual tilt option. And I will go ahead and set the rotation to 90 degrees. So you can see. So that was just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to go ahead and delete that fill zone because one and a half megawatts is plenty for what I'm trying to show. Some other things that you'd like to do is add walkways. I can choose which type of walkway I want with and cut out types. And I will go ahead and put in a walkway over here. And put in another one over here. All right. And I'll hit um, escape. And now that I've drawn in my walkway, I can now go and select update panels. Aurora will readjust the number of modules that can fit on this particular roof surface for me. Now the modules have adjusted to respect the boundaries of this walkway. I will need to run my electrical configuration once again. And you can see how easy it is to switch between 3D and 2D views in one single view. All right, so we're around one and a half megawatts. I'll go ahead and click simulate and when I click simulate that's running Aurora's performance simulation engine so we can see that our simulation results show that this would be uh, a 2.06 gigawatt hour production system well I see it's offsetting way more of my energy consumption than I would have liked and if I click on show advanced I can see some more information about the system the yield the performance ratio how much I'm losing due to tilt shading, soiling on the DC side and AC side, as well as some of our simulation logs. So for example, module level simulation with the shading engine, inverter clipping enabled. So all of this information would be included in our performance simulation engine. I can also change some of my settings over here if I'd like to do so. Let's go ahead and add, just for demonstration purposes, a carport over here. So when I click on insert panels. I will select ground mounts and carports. I will want to use the same module as before. I will choose an orientation. Let's set a tilt of 10 degrees, a height of 15 feet. I am going to go ahead and do this as two rows of 15 columns. Create and there is our solar canopy and I can go ahead and rotate this. I can do this in 2D or 3D space. I can copy and paste for example. In this case I'm going to rotate it as well. Now, of course I can change this if I wish. I can edit the number of columns and the number of rows. I can increase those 
very easily over on the right. All right, great, we can move on to the next section. What I'd like to do next is go through NEC validation. So if I click over here on validation, you'll see that Aurora is running a report and you can see that it has ran over 18,000 tests to basically see if our system would pass our NEC validation check. Let's take, for example, the inverter power. We're looking at things such as input power and seeing whether it meets NEC requirements. Or we could look at things such as string sizing. So, for example, let's just make sure that the minimum uh, maximum string voltage is less than the inverter's max input voltage. You can see the math over here. You can also see over here your wiring path. And if you click on any component, it will take you back to where it would be found in your design, for example. Fantastic. All right, well, let's move on to our pricing section. I am going to put in a cost. Let's say that this is going to be 225 a watt in this particular case. You can choose cost per watt. You can choose line items. You can choose flat costs. I'll select financing and add financing. We can call this a cash financing option. And I will select the cash commercial financing. Once I'm here, I just click on Run Analysis, and Aurora will generate a report for me showing me what the payback period is, how much money this customer is going to save on their monthly electric bills. So these are the cumulative cash flows, annual cash flows, and their electricity bill before and after solar, which you can see over here. You can also, after you're done, select Export, and that will generate a nice spreadsheet for you. If I open up the spreadsheet, I can get a lot of details as to the system. I can get information such as, you know, what are the various assumptions. I can look at things in fields such as uh, electricity output, uh, any sort of incentive information, EBITDA if you happen to be a finance geek. All of this information for you is in one location. Finally, to pull all that information together into one document, I'll select Documents. I can choose which document I want. I can choose a proposal template, and I can do a financial analysis. And with the financial analysis, I will just choose our Aurora commercial template. Let's select Cash and select Create. All right, here's the proposal. Obviously, this can have whatever logo or whatever styling you wish. So I'm just going to go ahead and right-click to select a few different options that I do want to show. So for example, in this case, I may not want to show the irradiance map. It shows how much money the customer is saving. It shows the utility bill savings. They're going to save over $5 million over the life of the system. Another 2D or 3D view. Just simply click to change orientation, depending on what you want to show. It shows a number of different environmental benefits and things like that how much the system will cost after the ITC, and all of this is customizable to what you think is relevant. Once you're done, just go ahead and click Print, and now you can generate a nice proposal that you'll send off to your customer. Fantastic.